Julie, before we go into the G8 International Conference on Open Data for Agriculture that you attended, I wanted to touch upon why open data is important per se for agriculture development. Why has it become such a hot topic currently? We know that information is, is among the most important commodities in the world. Um, and, and data in, in isolation is, is not as powerful as data that we can share. So making our data available and encouraging others to do the same um, enables collaboration and really helps us reduce duplicative research um, and spurs innovation while driving economic growth. So this is one of the reasons why the G8 uh, summit last year at, at Camp David made this commitment uh, for uh, G8 partners led by, by the U.S. Uh, to gather um, and discuss what action plans uh, countries might put into place. Uh, discuss, we also discussed uh, last week the ways in which open data are currently being used, um, both in developed countries and developing countries, um, and what further needs to be done. Agricultural data, per se, has received less attention in open data space than other kinds of data, although you know, much of the data that we do have available in open data, for example, weather data or GPS data that we're using very successfully um, globally does have agricultural application, but not much of the data has really been identified as, uh, as specific agricultural data per se. So why is open data for agriculture important? You know, I think uh, you at Global uh, Donor Platform know this. By 2050, uh, the world's going to have to sustain 9 billion people. Um, uh, so opening agricultural data and finding really innovative uses of that data is going to be critical to achieving uh, the, the goal of, of feeding people in a sustainable way. So we're hoping really to, to leverage modern data gathering and analysis techniques um, so we can understand better uh, the intricate nature and the complexity of food insecurity. It sounds very much like improving productivity. Where do you see the sustainability factor coming in there? Of course, it is about improving productivity, um, but we know open data can also help us understand, for example, uh, water, the uh, location of water resources, um, critical information about soil uh, can help us better understand cropping systems, can help us better understand characteristics of, of uh, landscapes so we can understand where it makes sense to intensify agriculture and where it makes sense to sort of back off um, and, uh, and, and reduce cultivation. So um, we're seeing already with the, the data that's available, um, we're, we're able to track landscapes and we're able to have a much better handle on where degradation is improving, where we really need to take action quickly uh, to, to prevent further degradation. You were talking about the Camp David commitment, and this conference was now about concrete deliverables on how to actually establish data platforms on a global scale, improving that data systems can actually talk to each other, a real problem for our technology involved. Where have you gotten in terms of taking concrete steps forward at the conference? What happened during the conference uh, were a number of uh, governments, as well as private sector entities, as well as non-governmental non organizations, came forward and announced uh, the public availability of, of very specific data sets. So I've got a long list of those from the US, which I won't read to you, but we can send that on to you. Um, but that was, that was quite exciting. Um, you know, from USAID and particularly from our, uh, our Bureau of Food Security, we announced the availability of uh, our, our uh, database, databases from, um, from Ghana and Bangladesh, the baseline population surveys. So we're quite, quite excited about that and we're anticipating that most of our feed to future countries will also uh, be coming forward and, and, and working with us to make their uh, baseline population surveys uh, available. Um, we also are um, increasingly making our our research um, available. This is another part of not only the, the, the G8 commitment, but President Obama's commitment um, and our Office of Science and Technology Policy's commitment to make federally funded research uh, results and data available and, and accessible in formats. So during the conference, we talked about it's not only about um, making data sets available. 
Um, but this challenge that we have of, of not just um, pulling data sets into the cloud, um, but making them usable, making them accessible. So increasingly, that's about um, improving the interfaces uh, between databases. Um, I think anybody who's worked with, with data knows how tedious it is to try and, and do all the conversions by hand. So increasingly, the, the algorithms, the technologies are allowing us to have very sophisticated interfaces. And now what's, uh, uh, what's very pressing, and this was, I think, for me, one of the most exciting parts of the, the conference, was the discussion of, of how to arrive at agreements uh, about what those interface standards should be um, so that uh, so that meteorological databases can speak to soil databases, can speak to uh, population databases. And uh, what's, what's uh, really, I think, perceived is perhaps something like uh, the, the process that, uh, that, that uh, led to agreements, sort of informal but, but uh, structured agreements that led to internet protocols. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think there was, there's, there's quite a lot of excitement and movement. There was a, an initial meeting of the, the, uh, the group that's going to take this on uh, last month in Europe. Um, and uh, they will be meeting again in, in September um, with working groups on agriculture and many other subjects. So, um, so that was a topic of, of discussion about how to bring those, uh, uh, how to arrive at those standards uh, at, a, at, at speed and in a process that's, that's, that's not formally negotiated, you know, but, but has this kind of flexibility and, and energy uh, similar to what we saw during the, the internet uh, protocol development. So, so what else came from the, the conference, sort of the, the um, you know, from our side, the release of these, these public data sets, private sector all also came forward with, with, with commitments to, to release data sets. For example, the, uh, the orphan crop data set uh, coming from the, the World Wildlife uh, Fund. Uh, the Scientists Without Borders uh, released a, a lot of dairy data. So um, the World Bank, livestock and food security data, um, the uh, uh, USCA, of course, released a whole uh, set of, of different data uh, uh, databases, as well as they are taking the lead in creating a, an agriculture-specific uh, website on, uh, on our um, government-wide open data space. So as far as um, what, what uh, other countries committed to, other G8 countries, uh, Japan, France, the uh, United Kingdom, the EU, Italy, and Canada also came forward um, with action plans, plans to release uh, action, well, they, they released action plans at the conference. Um, and so most of the entities, including the U.S., committed to opening existing government-funded data sets to the public and to support further research um, that will make these data sets accessible uh, to the public. Um, and also, I think this is also something very, very exciting for us and very important for the global donor platform. Um, the U.S. and other countries agreed to commit to, to support uh, the development of national agricultural data systems in developing countries. And this is one of the, the themes that came up over and over again during the discussions by our developing country partners as well, that um, it's, 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 it's fine to make open data uh, ex accessible, but uh, the data has to be good. Um, and as, as you know and, and your partners know at the platform, um, we've, we've been through a very long period of decline in, 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 many, uh, in the capacity of national uh, statistics and agricultural statistics services in developing countries. You talked already about how to make things accessible. Looking at the reality of the development context, those data are very complex. And if you actually look at them, you realize that they are not that easy to read quite often. So you mentioned also that there are action plans. So I was wondering, do they include ideas on how to set up capacities in countries to actually work with the data, to teach people how they can actually get into the computers and actually sift out the information that is retained in the data? Yes, in the conference we didn't get into the details of most countries' action plans. It was a stated commitment to create uh, capacity uh, to, to build back national agricultural data systems. And I think included in that you know, is, is the capacity to access, um, contribute to, and benefit from uh, open data globally. Um, 
but you know the reality is many countries um, and and farmers worldwide are already benefiting from from data open data in different ways so um, one of the uh, the very interesting things during the conference was the um, uh, was that we were able to hear from some of the projects that are using open data for example um, uh, the Grameen Foundation um, has some very interesting projects in, in Uganda uh, where they are, are connecting with databases and getting extension information, extension advice, um, also advice on, on weather, and farmers are able to access that information on their cell phones. Um, also very interesting is um, the, uh, the, the capacity of farmers uh, to contribute information back uh, to to the data sphere, so Grameen Foundation spoke about uh, the, the very real uh, benefits, for example, of in Uganda of farmers being able to report, um, for example, outbreaks of, of disease, um, and as well as receive themselves very quickly information on on prices. So it really opens up the the ability to to track in real time, you know, what's happening in terms of. Uh, um, what's happening in terms of uh, disease spread and I think we'll can have very uh, very important cost saving implications so you know we know that a disease is concentrated in a particular area that's where we target our, our dissemination that's where we uh, may target for example a livestock uh, vaccine campaign in areas that are hardest hit so I think already we're beginning to see uh, see see the power of, of, of open data the um, Kabi uh, from the United Kingdom, I think we're now getting into uh, what differences this make for the global donor platform, the, the issues that you had wanted to discuss. Um, Kabi um, is, uh, you, you may know, uh, making many of its research publications available online um, and in ways that are um, accessible to extension agents in, in the field so that they are able to be connected to um, uh, to uh, recommendations that are, are changing all the time, or they're able to to send pictures of uh, plant diseases or uh, uh, animals with with problems to a database and have a uh, have a recommendation, have a diagnosis and a recommendation come back to them. So I think um, it's it's really quite an exciting quite an exciting time. The um, I think during the um, the conference we heard quite a bit from the uh, from uh, genomics experts um, who are pioneers in this whole area where they they worked uh, quite diligently early on to create standards uh, to create agreements among uh, scientists who published in journals uh, uh, articles related to to uh, genomics they would also at the same time as they were published make those databases available they talked about uh, how that is that is pretty dramatically changing uh, the way in which uh, breeding is done and we're beginning to see even in developing countries uh, scientists working on on, uh, on issues such as uh, cassava diseases um, beginning to use those databases and beginning to uh, uh, to to make their models and identify uh, genetic traits much more quickly they're able to zero in uh, quite Quite rapidly now on uh, on the traits that control uh, resistance to disease, or um, in another case we discussed uh, the uh, the genes that control uh, the propensity to uh, to manufacture pro vitamin A. We've been talking about information sharing basically, and I guess the whole idea of what is a donor is changing fundamentally. What is a donation, and the whole idea that's been discussed for a long time, who's a donor, especially since Buzan. So do you think donors are adjusting their role and are they investing maybe more into providing common knowledge instead of bringing money to the table? Is that a shift of thinking that we recognize here? You know, I would put it a different way. You know, I think increasingly, you know, we're recognizing that this is, this is two-way traffic. Uh, Right, so there's a lot of information and knowledge that we have to share, um, but technology, including open data, is making it uh, much easier for farmers to also directly share their data and knowledge. So, um, so certainly, uh, information, 
research results, uh, making the results of, uh, of, uh, of surveys uh, quite important. I think we're, what was, we heard a lot of excitement at the conference about the possibility of this kind of sharing. Um, may seem like a, uh, a boost in resources to us. Um, eventually, because we'll, we should be able to cut down on duplication. I was speaking with a colleague yesterday. Um, if we have population database uh, data, if we have, if we're sharing population information and sampling frames, um, we should be able to plan more effectively donors and countries together. You know, what are the real uh, strategically important additional surveys that we need to plan? Probably we need to do less. Uh, we So mm -hmm. I think there's all kinds of possibilities for, for sharing, for more strategic targeting of resources, um, and for uh, a two-way information flow. I, I think people, all of us at the conference, felt strongly that this is, uh, uh, it is a, it's a global marketplace of, of ideas. And there's, there's much in the technology, much in open data, uh, that should make it easier for developing country partners to participate directly um, without so many so many of the filters that, that uh, sometimes we donor organizations put between us and the uh, in developing countries. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.